of Worship, your source for commentary and discussion on worship, theology, and culture. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Hello and welcome to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones and continuing today through the Psalm Project with Psalm 56. Psalm 56 is a very interesting psalm, even beginning with the title in your Bibles. It will probably have something like this. The title will be uh, To the Choir Master, According to the Dove on Far Off Terebinths, a Mitcom of David, when the Philistines seized him in Gath. Now, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> what is going on in this title? What What is the dove on far-off terebinths? It was probably a tune, uh, a musical tune, or maybe some sort of instruction. Some people think maybe a percussion instrument. Um, so according to the choir master, according to the dove on far-off terebinths, that was the musical instruction or the tune that was to be used for this psalm, a mitcom of David when the Philistines seized him in Gath. And it is really difficult to fit this psalm into David's life as it's known from the historical books, at least. The closest parallel might be 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 15, when David was faking madness and craziness before the king of Gath in order to escape him. And so that could be what this relates to, but it's really difficult to fit this psalm into, into um, a part of David's life, really. Uh, psalm 56, though, um, let's get into this. I, I will read it first, and then I'll break it down. So here we go in verse 1. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they endure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape. In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my ears in your, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Yes, my feet from falling. That I may walk before God in the light of life. So the psalmist here, like many psalms, laments, but then also offers his praise to God. So in other words, his focus is not the lament. That is sort of a, a side thing in this prayer to God, and he praises God. And I wish our laments were the same. We always focus on what is going on in our lives, and we focus on us. It's me, me, me. Look at what's going on with me, God, rather than praising God, and that being the source of our strength and the source of our prayer, and then sprinkling those laments in that prayer. That is how we should approach a lament. That even though we are going through a difficult time, maybe a very, very difficult time, our focus is still the praise of God. Look at verse 2. My, tra my enemies trample on me all day long. So the enemies here, like ruthless animals, they treat the psalmist as their prey. In verse 5, all day long, they endure my cause. Their thoughts are against me. For evil, they change the meanings of his words. In other words, to to put him in a bad light, they speak false things and lies about him. Verse seven. For their crime, will they escape? That's a question the psalmist is asking here. In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. 
The parallelism of this verse suggests that the enemies are perhaps the foreign nations that surround Israel. Keep in mind, David was a king. He would have dealt with that. In verse 8, where it says, you have kept count of my tossings, uh, other translations say wanderings. You've kept count. The psalmist is calling upon God to hear and to remember his prayer. In verse 9, then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. So David here remembers God's covenant his promises, uh, such as in De- Deuteronomy 28, 7. This is a promise that God will scatter the enemies of his people. Verse 12, I will perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. So when the psalmist's prayer is answered, he promises to return his offer in thanks. And he does this by offering sacrifices and, th- and singing thanksgiving psalms, uh, si- similar to Psalm 34. In other words, God, you protect me, you rescue me from this pit of despair, and I will eternally praise you. And the psalmist here really does not doubt that God will help him. In fact, when you read the psalm, he is remembering that God will, in fact, be faithful to his covenant. And my hope and prayer is that we all remember that, no matter what we go through, that God will always be faithful to his covenant. Sure, we can look back on the past and praise God for what he has done, but it takes another level of faith to look and say, God is going to be faithful no matter what. There's a worship song that says, he never failed me yet. And when I sing it, when I lead it, I like the song. I actually take the yet off the end of that phrase. I I don't know if that's legal to do. I'll, I'll get in trouble for that if it's not, but take the yet off. Instead, instead of he's never failed me yet, I say he's never failed me, period. And he won't. The yet sort of implies that, well, there's a chance that he will fail you and he won't. God is always faithful to his promises and faithful to his covenant between himself and his people. So here is Psalm 56. Thank you for listening today to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Your vows are binding on me, God. 
I'll render thanks to you For you have saved my soul from death My feet from stumbling too So I will walk before God's sight With life and in its light